Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 4th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you an update on space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and as well, world weather. Starting out here, looking at our sun, we have Lasco 3 images right here, as we just had a large CME blast, two of them actually, one from the southeastern limb of our sun, and another pretty sizable one on the northwestern limb. Visible here on LASCO 3 as well. With Solar Dynamics Observatory. Looking at the 304 angstroms. You can still see a pretty active sunspot region heading out. There's the CME. Plasma filament eruption off the southeastern limb. And then there was another one. Right here, this plasma filament lifted away in a northwestern fashion. There's that. And then watch on the western side cresting for another CME. Now this is set to give us a glancing blow, just like the last solar flare. And as well, CME that erupted from this sunspot region Look at that plasma tsunami across the northwestern limb there. Amazing imagery coming out from Solar Dynamics Observatory. We'll have a quick look at multi-spectrum. Showing all of the Latest events over the past 48 hours on our star. Very thick plasma filament here on the southwestern limb, developing, arcing, lifting up there. And then big CME southeastern and CME northwestern. So our sun is still very active and producing a lot of activity. After we are already seeing a graduated increase in sunspot numbers expected here with solar cycle 25. Right now our solar x-ray flux remains in C-class range. Geomagnetic activity remains at a KP index of 3. So slightened, slightly heightened. And as well, Aurora forecast is definitely down to a dull roar for the Aurora. But you're going to see some more tonight. As forecasted here with daily events worldwide, I've been talking about these last few events with, from our sun. And we've got about two, three, maybe even four days straight of geomagnetic activity visible in our Northern Hemisphere and as well Southern Hemisphere. Right now our real-time solar wind is sitting at 446 kilometers per second. Radio flux coming in at 128 SFU. Let's have a quick look around the world for earthquakes as we did have a pretty sizable earthquake Throughout the day today, a 6.0 earthquake rang out in Port Vila, Vanuatu at a 23 kilometer depth after seeing a very deep earthquake here in the Fiji region. 513 kilometer depth right there. So we were expecting larger shallow earthquakes to follow and we got a bunch of them. One just south of Kamchatka, 5.5. Uh, Japan, Anami, Japan, and as well, Mariana Islands seeing a 5, was it 5.1? Yeah, 5.1 in face, Micronesia, so just west of Mariana Islands. Active day indeed. 260 earthquakes across the USGS map. Deep earthquake there in Afghanistan. As well, a sizable earthquake here in Greece. 
seeing in Corona, Greece, a 4.6 4 at a 35 kilometer depth, and just northwest there in Bulgaria, Vadia, 4.5. And that's just southwest of Ukraine, west in the Black Sea. South America, pretty quiet today, considering the last week that we've seen. Only one earthquake, 4.2 in Equique, Chile, and as well, Ecuador, 4.5. Minor activity continues through Puerto Rico. And then across the U.S., we did see some an increase in seismicity as well. Hawaii looks like Petrolia saw a sizable 4.1. Actually, Rio del California 4.1 earthquake rang out. A couple aftershocks through the region. No minor swarms to talk about across the U.S. Looking over Hawaii. Largest through the region today. Looks like it was a 3.3. And now Hayu, Hawaii. Increased seismicity up into Alaska as well. And that's, the last, that's a look at the last 24 hours for earthquakes across the planet. Quick look here at the last seven days around the world. Take a quick moment to thank everybody for inviting me into your living rooms and as well for tuning in to daily events worldwide. Much love to almost 50,000 followers. Keep sharing and caring. And thank you so much for joining the family. And always know that we have a 24-7 live stream going. You can always check up on our planet at any time. And as well, come and say hi to people from all over the world. That was a look at the last seven days for Earthlings. Now, something I wanted to point out here as well, pointing out all of the most recent volcanoes getting updated, looking at Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery. Yesterday, I talked about that large atmospheric river stretching from Thailand to uh, Tofino, BC, that's the big story maker right now, except for one tropical storm. Tropical storm uh, 23 over New Caledonia is a category two and still not named here anyway. I'll have a quick look at all of the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Nevada's de Ruiz in Colombia. Fuego in Guatemala, Sangue in Ecuador, Reventador in Ecuador, Swiss in Ajima, Japan, Sabancaya in Peru, Semeru, Indonesia, many storms across South America, and as well Western Indonesia through Sumatra, up into parts of Thailand. A lot of fires being reported there as well. So that's about 11 volcanoes getting updated today. And as far as I know, we have 49 active and erupting across the planet. Stay tuned tomorrow for the volcanic activity report as well. We'll be looking at planetary positioning current and for the next couple of weeks. Another quick look here at nullschool.com showing upper level winds. This is winds at 10,000 feet. And just look at all the different directions of the trade winds here. We've got west here, east, east, west, east. So many transitions across the planet right now. Northern hemisphere, split polar vortex, cold temperatures lingering across Europe and up into parts of Southeast Asia. Now what I wanted to point out here is we're going to go back. 
go back even to 2021 at this time. You notice a difference here in the jet streams. We've got west, east, and west. That means that that's a normal upper level jet stream to be visible here. And if we if we go back even back to 2014, I think this is as far as it goes, it goes back to 2013, even back to 2015. This is about where we saw the same thing. And this is the same year that we saw the most uh, destructive hurricanes named across the U.S. Just some interesting wind data that I wanted to share with you between now and then. It's quite a difference. I was going to give you a quick show here of weather systems across the world, brought to you by windy.com. As well, all links are in the description below of this video. So if you ever want to see these sites for yourself, feel free to check out the links in the description. As well, there are a few links there to help support the channel. And again, I want to thank everybody who does all of the memberships, follows, and as well, donations and super chats. Thank you and God bless all of you. Having a look here, tropical system heading into New Caledonia. That's about the biggest system that we're going to be observing here over the next few days. Looks like it's just going to head west of the islands. But then you're going to see quite a few waves of moisture coming into Sydney from this large storm starting Thursday. As that tropical system heads towards New Zealand, making landfall Monday, April 11th. As well, we've got the two tropical systems I pointed out yesterday. One here, still developing, most likely heading to Japan as a Category 2 cyclone or typhoon. As well, Philippines here, you got this pretty strong low. Hanging around here for about five days straight, so watch for flooding conditions as well as torrential downpours from that intense low. Looks like it may even get sucked up behind this low pressure system heading northwards to Japan. Cold temperatures lingering across Europe. Looks like you won't see a break until. Friday the 8th or 9th, after this winter storm finally ushers its way eastward. Looking across North America, watch for a lot of snow to fall across Quebec and Northern Ontario from this low coming through. Gulf moisture bringing extreme weather to southeastern states, Tuesday to Wednesday. Rain coming in for Ontario, Wednesday, Thursday. And then watch the back side of this system. Gonna be bringing down some pretty cold temperatures Thursday, Friday. And it looks like by next weekend, we could see more snow across Ontario and unseasonably cool temperatures. Again, a quick thanks to everybody for watching today. This has been Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash that like button and maybe share it with your friends and family from around the world. Thanks for watching today. This has been Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now.